What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. DJ Vlad is a reporter on hip hop, a commentator on hip hop, and has been so for many years. He's extremely known, extremely rich. He has billions of views here on the YouTube platform. But here's where DJ Vlad gets out of line. He's a very pro Jew, all right? Anything to deal with Israel, uh, he's a staunch proponent of that. But the, the issue that he has is he often gets into black community discussions, sticks his nose in the business in which it does not belong, all right? For example, the conversations on reparations. He talks about that. He shouldn't have anything to say about that. Yet, if you were to talk about the war in Israel and Palestine, he'd be pissed off about that, right? And see, he doesn't understand the level of respect between cultures or people. If he would just be a guy in hip hop without doing some of the extra stuff, nobody would care. But that's not what Vlad does. Vlad decides to always meddle into other people's business. So once Vlad decided to do a commentary about, you know, Kendrick Lamar's response to Drake, then, you know, this lady, Morgan Jenkins, who teaches at Princeton, she told him basically, listen, stay out of black folks business. All right. Now, again, I wouldn't have told him that. I mean, what he was talking about at that particular point was not racially motivated at all. And it wasn't, to be honest. He was just giving his perspective of a battle between two people that the whole world was talking about who happened to be black. So she said, you know, stay out of black folks business. Now, he could have handled it a lot differently. He could have ignored her. He could have blocked her. In fact, Morgan Jenkins is a female that has blocked Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed said he doesn't understand why he was blocked, but he didn't do that. He decided to pretty much go back and forth with her and tag Princeton University, basically trying to get her fired. Like, yo, well, do you talk to your students at, like this at Princeton? Pretty much trying to tell her people that, look, you have somebody here who's using the black card against me, DJ Vlad. And so, hey, you know, I need to give a call to Princeton. Now, Tariq Nasheed explained why he felt that DJ Vlad was trying to do this. Yeah, let me get deep for a minute with this Vlad. Let me tell you why Vlad is pulling this little Karen routine that he's about to go tell. Right now, family, y'all know they just put up a um, the powers that be. They're passing um, a hate crime bill, a hate crime type of bill against anti-Semitism. All right. They got something where. Boy, you can. The, it's boy. If you say anything that makes anybody think that is anti-Semitic, boy, that's a crime. If you ruffle anybody's feathers. And if they determine that it's even remotely anti-Semitic, they're making it a federal crime. All right. Want y'all to understand why, why Vlad got all of this, um, you know, this bravado now. Why he's real bold to really show his hand now. Because when they get these anti-Semitic hate crime bills, you know what they do? They always use us. They always try to act like there's this rise of anti-Semitism with black people where all of these protests, these are white supremacists going in on Israel and all of these protests all around the country. These are white supremacist groups going out here, marching, talking about Jewish people. It's the white supremacists and the suspected white supremacists, the Nick Fuentes and all of these people saying all of this crazy stuff about Jewish people. There is no systematic anti-black or anti-Semitism coming from black people. Yes, Vlad is Jewish. So don't think he's not using that to his advantage. So I want to talk about Claudine Gay. Claudine Gay is a longtime tenured professor at Harvard um, that became the president of Harvard. However, that was short lived. I'm gonna to explain to you why it was short-lived. Harvard president, university president, Claudine Gay has resigned. Gay was one of the Ivy League presidents 
whose muted response about calls for Israeli genocide at a congressional hearing led to demands for her ouster. But after weathering that episode, accusations of plagiarism were too much. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian has more. Six months into her tenure, Harvard University President Claudine Gay announced she's resigning so that our community can navigate this moment of extraordinary challenge. Gay's resignation comes nearly a month after she and the presidents of UPenn and MIT faced widespread condemnation following this testimony at a House education hearing on anti-Semitism on college campuses. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These House Republican Chair Elise Stefanik, a Harvard alum, posted two down, referring to Gay and Penn President Liz McGill, who also resigned days after the hearing. So her and the University of Pennsylvania's president both got axed. But it was because they're staying on anti-Semitism, okay? So because the Jews have a lot of power when it comes to academics in, you know, almost every industry, if you offend them, they will come after you. Or if you don't stand with them, this is the same thing they did with Brandon Johnson in Chicago. You know, they refused to speak with him. But here's what DJ Vlad miscalculated. You see, if she was discussing anti-Semitism, he would have a point. But she intelligently stayed away from the anti-Semitic part. And she stuck to the black part. And when she said, stay out of black business, and you responded by tagging her, you're pretty much trying to tell her that, hey, I'm gonna get you fired because I feel that, well, I'm a part of this community that has pull in the Ivy League system. So I'm gonna use that authority against you until it backfired. And that's exactly what happened, it backfired. It backfired on him tremendously. So here's what he's saying now. After considerable reflection, I would like to apologize to Morgan Jerkins for tagging her job in my replies during our Twitter exchange last weekend. Maybe I called her Jenkins earlier. Sorry if I did. Dennis Byron, I don't know who this is. Usually sincere apologies are more immediate. My guess is that you were checking the temperature in the room and realized it was getting too hot to handle. Your immediate reaction was to target her employer and not create a respectable dialogue. To compound the situation, you attacked a highly respected scholar in our community, Mark Lamont Hill. The jury is still deliberating on this one. I, I don't care for Mark Lamont Hill. Mark Lamont Hill uh, attacks a lot of different people in the community. Uh, so anyways, uh, Mark Lamont Hill's a joke, but fair enough. I get the overall message the brother's trying to say, all right? Also, what you're not understanding is you're talking about a black woman. So again, you talking to a female and with women's rights so strong as it is, it, it, it probably is not gonna matter that hey, you are from that community, especially if somebody's not talking about that community or the conversation is done in that community and you are pretty much threatening to get a woman fired that's a black woman? Oh no, bro, you're, you're asking for it, okay? You're asking for it, you're overstepping your boundaries. So Vlad actually felt that he had more pull than what he did. And then this is a strategy that I think that a lot of blacks need to use. Whenever engaging people of different cultures, you should never engage anything about their culture. If you're gonna have a discussion, you should never talk down on them. I, I never would make it my point to discuss anything about Jews, uh, whites. If I'm talking about them, uh, I, I'm telling them to stay out of our stuff because whatever their response can be, cannot be, the, they're on the defensive. They're the ones that will make the mistakes, not me. So if that is going to be their position, that would be on them. Stay away from those discussions in the African-American community that takes the position away from your people. And I believe she's shown us how to deal with such people like Vlad. They feel emboldened to talk about our people, yet they don't wanna focus on what they do, okay? They won't let us have no conversations about them. There's a price to pay. So therefore, if we feel that, listen, you're talking about, and it's subjective. Hey, the Jews have the right to be subjective about anything that they want. Now she's saying, stay out of our business. Well, okay, to us, it's like you're a hater, you're, you're, you know, you're a racist, right? So stay out of our business. We should have that right because the Jews can, can, can feel that person is being offensive based on how they feel. Look how I did Jamie Foxx. 
how Jamie Foxx was dealt with, even most of the Jews uh, didn't believe, you know, that was anti-Semitic. He had to apologize, even though they was like, listen, he's not talking about us, but somebody thought that. So as much as we have the right to do so, we should be able to do the same thing since anybody else. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. Pretty sure you just heard the bell. We're out. Thank you.